Hey everyone, real quick, before we jump into the episode, I have a brand new ebook that I am super excited to share with you because it's going to help you to finally create some balance in your life. It's called The Balance System, and it's a practical and simple guide for creating sustainable balance each and every day. Now, this is for you if you've been struggling with finding balance in your daily life. If you're feeling overwhelmed and burnt out, and you're just tired of living that way, then I have a solution for you that has worked for myself and thousands of other people. Now, what's really cool is that for a limited time, I'm allowing you to pay what you want for the ebook. Yes, really, you can pay whatever you want for this ebook, minimum of $5. So to go get your copy today, go over to matthewbivens.com slash balance. Again, that's matthewbivens.com slash balance. Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to the Having It All podcast. I got a big smile on my face right now, knowing that you're here with me having this beautiful conversation about what it looks like to have it all. It's my belief. I believe we all can have it all. Health, wealth, joy, love, friendships, relationships, intimacy, all of it. All of it is available to each and every one of us. And I absolutely love talking about how do we actually do that? How do we actually create a life where we can sit back and say, wow, I have it all. And that's what we dig into on this podcast. So thank you so much for joining me today. And today's episode is all about balance. That's the current campaign that we're in. That's the current uh, topic that we're in is balance. And today I'm talking about balancing out boundaries at work. When you're at a workplace and you just have a really, really hard time establishing and maintaining boundaries, and there really doesn't seem to be a balance between what you output versus what comes back into you. And how do you actually establish that balance between those boundaries at work. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And it was inspired by this really powerful, raw, just just a very vulnerable conversation I had with a friend of mine. And what that conversation did in terms of me reflecting on my work history and establishing boundaries within my work. And so it's going to be really, really awesome conversation. And uh, you're going to get a lot of great stuff from it. To kick things off, we got to talk about magic. Yeah, magic. It's one of the byproducts of living an abundant, loving life. And I really, really enjoy talking about magic because I know that I'm a powerful man. I know I'm a powerful being. And I know that I'm creating magic all the time. But I don't even stop to reflect and and truly let it all soak in and pinpoint all the small and medium and large pieces of magic. I don't do that you know, to the extent that I could. And so sharing it with you on the podcast gives me an opportunity to sit back and reflect on my magic and to potentially inspire you all to reflect on your magic as well. So magic in this context is your ability to influence self, others, and life in an empowering way. So I'm going to share a really cool piece of magic from my life that happened over the weekend. And then if you feel inspired, hit pause and reflect on a piece of magic in your life. And then you can keep it rolling. How about that? All right. So my magic took place on Saturday. Sarah, Maya, and I were in the uh, town square in the the town that we live in. It's got this really awesome little town square, kind of an old school feel to it. And uh, pulled into the parking space, and this truck pulls in next to me. And uh, it's a big truck. And the parking spaces are decent size. They're not like super big, but, you know, there was like a small amount of space between our car and his car. Enough to open the doors, but not like I couldn't dance in the in the gap, you know what I mean? So anyway, we go about our business and we return to our car and uh, everybody gets buckled up and I back out of the space and boom, I hit his car. Yeah. I hit the dude's car on the back side. Both of the, the, the rear ends of our cars collided as I was trying to navigate us out of the parking spot. So you know, I pulled forward a little bit to minimize the damage, hit park, jumped out of the car, and looked to see what the damage was. And there was some dents on his car, and some, some paint had rubbed off, and 
someone there was some dents on my car and the paint had rubbed off my car had more damage which is tends to be the case right i feel like that's anytime i've had a fender bender my car got all jacked up and their car was just like a little scratch so his car had some damage my car had some damage but he was nowhere to be found i didn't i didn't see him anywhere so what i did is i left a note i wrote down what had happened i wrote down my name my phone number told him to give me a call so then we went to lunch and i could tell that my my peace was disturbed a little bit. You know, like I was excited to go to lunch and spend this time on a Saturday with, with uh, Maya and Sarah. But, you know, given the, the little car accident, I just, I wasn't fully peaceful. And that, that bothered me. And I kept telling myself, hey, you know what? It's all going to be cool. Whatever happens, like, that's why you guys have an emergency fund so that we could pay for stuff. And, you know, I would go, I was going through my mind, like, is he going to be really pissed and unreasonable? Or is he going to be really cool somewhere in between? Like, is he going to say, wait a minute, you hit my taillight and my, my headlamp and my side door and crack the glass in my, you know, in, in, the, in the passenger seat? Like, is he going to try to add on all these different damages? Or is he going to say, okay, yeah, I get it. You know, just cut me a couple hundred bucks and we'll be, we'll be, we'll be cool. I really didn't know. So I did my best to practice having faith that it was all going to be cool. So we're at lunch, and uh, I'm a little bit more in my peace now. Lunch has been served, and we're just sitting and eating. And I get a phone call, and it's from a number I don't recognize. So I, I thought, ooh, that's probably him. So I took the phone call, and uh, he picked up. And right from the first moment that he started talking, I, I just knew that it was all totally cool. And that's exactly how it turned out to be. He told me that the truck that I hit of his was his work truck. And he had no attachment whatsoever to the the aesthetics of the truck. And he didn't even really see where the damage was. And he was more interested in our car and the damage that had been done to our car. So he was checking in with me to see how our car was and to see how, how all of us were, make sure we were all healthy and okay. And then he did something that I didn't expect. He apologized to me. He apologized to me for parking so close. Because he, he remembered which, you know, who I was in, in our car. And so he said, I'm, I'm so sorry for parking that close. You know, I, I knew I didn't do a great job parking, so I'm really sorry about that. And I thought that was just, like, incredible. And it, it, it totally blew my mind that, you know, I was the one who clipped him, and he's apologizing to me. So we, we just exchanged, you know, continued to our conversation, just exchanged pleasantries, and we're like, Hey, you know, it, it's cool. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad I'm okay. Everything's great. And we said, we said bye. And that was it. And that to me is a perfect example of a magical moment. And uh, that, that's a life magical moment right there. Um, and I'm just going to continue to hold that and be like, you know, things work out. They always do. And just have faith. You don't necessarily know exactly how something's going to play out, but just keep holding that faith. And a lot of times it's going to play out right in your favor or even better than, than you thought. So I know it was a long story, but uh, it was a very, very cool piece of magic that um, I want to remember. So now, again, if you feel inspired, think about some magic for yourself. What is something amazing that you've created and, or influenced in your life recently? Big or small, doesn't matter. All of it's important. So again, if you want, take a moment to think of your magic. And I'm going to continue with some listener love. And today for the listener love segment of this episode, I want to give love to you. I want to to give so much love and appreciation and gratitude to you for joining me on this conversation, for taking the time out of your day to just tune in and listen. Because you don't have to do that. There's so many other things you could do. There are so many other podcasts right now that you could listen to. Even shows that are similar to mine or talk about similar types of things. But you've chosen to, to listen to, to this episode and this show. And I, I just can't express how much I am I'm so appreciative of that. It's even, uh, yeah, I'm just like stumbling over my words right now. But it means so, so much to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, this show was never about downloads. It was never about how, how high in the charts can the show grow. It was never about any of that stuff. It was always about 
me just feeling this burning desire to talk about something that I, I knew, I knew that there was others out there who thought this way, that you can have it all, that life does not have to be about compromise, that life and the universe is abundant, that, that you know, whatever you want to call God, you know, it's like he wants you to be happy and fulfilled and joyful and loved and just wrapped up in all those amazing feelings. And I truly believe that. And so started out this podcast because I wanted to explore that question and I wanted to connect with other people who, who felt the same way. So it's just super cool to me that you have come on this journey with me and um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm excited to get into today's conversation. I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, I, have, I have a lot of opinions about balance. I was gonna say I'm a big fan of balance, but really I have a lot of beliefs and opinions about balance. And so that's what inspired this series of episodes that I've been doing, starting with last week's conversation about balance, and it's gonna continue for, uh, for one more episode. And today, you know, the, the, a lot of times when we think about balance, it has to do with our work you know, the work-life balance. It has to do with with where we spend, a lot of us spend the majority of our time each day and each week working. And so trying to figure out some sort of balance between and within that work is a big, big, big challenge. Big challenge. And boundaries commonly comes up as one of the things that either never gets established or consistently gets violated when it comes to work, having some sort of boundary between your work hours, the time that you you are working versus the time that you are allowed to be off or expected to be off. And when that boundary is clouded or doesn't exist, then we feel imbalanced. That's what's going to happen. You're going to feel imbalanced. It's probably going to lead to feelings of being burnt out it might lead to feelings of, of being overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the things you've got going on, not just at work, but in the other areas of your life. And all of those things, those are ingredients for being unhappy. Those are ingredients for being frustrated about life, about having a perspective that the glass is half empty. Those are ingredients for feeling scarce, right? So a lot of it comes down to this idea of balance and this idea of boundaries. And as I said at the top of the episode, I was very inspired recently by a conversation I had with a friend of mine where he shared just how out of balance he was with his work. And I won't tell you the, you know, go through all the details, but but basically he works a very demanding job where he's pretty new in the company, new-ish, and, and new-ish in the field or the industry as a whole. And so he doesn't believe that he has any in his words, I don't have the right to say that I'm overworked. I don't have the right to say that I ha- that my boss gives me too much work because I haven't been there long enough because I'm still wanting to, to learn and I desire to learn so that I can potentially not just advance in this company, but advance in, in, in his career. And there are other people in the company who have more work than he does. So how can he complain when other people are taking on 50%, 60%, maybe even double the work that he has, right? And so that's a a place I feel like so many people find themselves in where you convince yourself that you don't have a right to stand up for yourself because that's what happens. Because the idea of standing up for yourself within your, your job to your boss or your manager or with your teammates or your coworkers or whatever, that idea of standing establishing some sort of boundary, holding that boundary, right? Making sure that you are taking care of the things that you need in order to not just sustain your life, but to feel like you're thriving, taking care of those things that, have, that, that are required outside of work. If you aren't doing that, then yeah, you feel imbalanced. And so after that conversation, I thought a lot about that because I've felt that way in the past myself. You know, I remember working in companies where I feel like I didn't have a right to to say something or to say no. I feel like I don't have a right to say no. And that would just 
add on top of me already feeling uncomfortable saying no, right? Because I've been a type of person who just would always say yes, a people pleaser. I don't want anybody to to not like me. I don't want my boss to think, you know, to think differently of me. So I'm going to say yes, I'm going to take on more. And then it's easy for that snowball to just pick up momentum and get bigger and bigger and bigger where, you know, it gets even harder to to hold any sort of boundary, right? To have any any sort of I like semblance of balance because then work just bleeds into everything else. And so I've been there and I could totally relate to him. So it did get me thinking about, okay, how, like, what are the issues with the type of thinking that create the internal conversation of, I can't say no, I haven't been here long enough, who am I to, to complain, right? Because there's, there's some issues with the type of thinking. So one of the big issues on its face is there's this attachment and this fear-based attachment to the job itself, right? That if I say something to my boss, maybe they end up firing me. And I, I can't, that can't happen, right? Because it's, that, that would be the worst thing in the world for me to lose this job. I would rather put my health and my well-being and screw balance. I'll throw that out the window. I'd rather do that than lose this job. And so that's mixed in there. Then there's this whole thing over the idea of like deferring your balance to a future point that I think a lot of people do. We we'll say things like, well, once this project is done, then I'll, I'll work on the balance. Once the, listen, once this quarter, this quarter is crazy, it's, just, it's always like this, once this quarter is complete, then I'm going to work on this. Or maybe you're like, you know what, I'm going to quit in four months. I'm going to quit this job in four months, so let me just deal with it now because I know I'm going to quit in four months. I got to get the two-year mark. Once I get the two-year mark, then I have my, you know, whatever thing, because I've heard that before from friends and family. I got to get this mark. And then when I get that mark, okay, now I can go and I have more, more movement and more options. So, you know, we're deferring the, the, the balance that we want to the future. And what kind of goes along with that is we believe that in the future, you know, after I hit the two-year mark or once, once we're past the, the quarter, at that point, now I have a reason to establish more balance in my life, right? It'll be uh, the new job or the new promotion. And so then I have a reason or then I'll have the opportunity. We'll be at a better place. Everything will be more calmed down. You know, the big product launch will be over and now I have the opportunity to establish more balance. Or sometimes we think I'll have the motivation then because I'll be, you know, I won't, I will no longer be focused on just getting to the two-year mark. Then I'll be motivated to have the balance, and what happens in all those, those situations is you're putting, you know, your self-care and your health last on the list. You know, and that's just, that's what's going on. That's why you're not feeling balanced right now. And rarely is there anything proactive happening with health, proactive happening towards balance. It's all reactive. Reactive is, oh my gosh, I've had this burning ache in my stomach. I need to go to the doctor. And the doctor tells you, uh, yeah, you got something serious going on. So I need you to take off work for a week and you got to go and take this medicine. That's reactive versus being proactive, which is what I'm about to get into in a little bit. And the last thing I'll say about the, the thinking, right? The thinking of, I can't say no. Who am I to say no? I don't have the right, all of that. One of the things that could be at the heart of it is a fear of rejection. Because if you say no, then that person might take their love away. They might take their approval away. And that can be a a beast of a fear. And that can absolutely lead a person to just continue to say yes. And not just at work, but in, in all other areas of life. Just keep saying yes. Because that fear, oh my gosh, if I say no, what if? That becomes real. I talked about attachment just a few minutes ago, and that's what that's what it creates as attachment, this dependency. Because oh my gosh, well, if like when when you know if 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 I say if I say what I what I need, if I tell them what I need, then he's gonna remove all of the feelings he has for me, and or he's gonna not approve of me anymore, or he's gonna whatever it is, 
and I'm going to be left with nothing. That's a scary proposition. It really is. And it falls right in alignment with one of the things that I believe balance is about. A lot of people are going to say balance is about being able to manage your time, being able to to maintain boundaries. I've heard that before. Balance is about your boundaries. But for me, balance is really about getting into the center of yourself. Balance is about those deposits into you, into yourself. Because when you are the one who is filling you up, when you are the one who is making those massive love deposits into you, when you are the one that you can trust on and rely on, when you get your security from within, then you don't need it from outside. And so balance for me becomes about getting back into that center and having at your center things like principles, living from a place of principles. At your center, being clear as to what's most important to you in your life, living accordance to that, accordance to your values, your core beliefs, right? At your center, making sure that you are filled up in all of the ways that you need to be filled up in order to be able to thrive in life, not just physically, but emotionally filled up, mentally filled up, spiritually filled up, socially filled up. That to me is what balance is all about, whether it's balance in terms of a work relationship and trying to maintain boundaries there or balance in terms of all the things you've got going on in your life from your work to your family, to your friendships, to your hobbies, all of it comes back to that powerful centered space. And when you're in that powerful centered space, you don't fear the rejection of somebody else. Because you know that that person doesn't ultimately dictate whether you are lovable or whether you are valuable or whether you are worthy. They can't take that away from you if it's generated from within. So that's just my overall philosophy and my approach towards balance. And so now I want to share with you some of the ways that if you are feeling really struggling, if, if you're just really struggling with balance and boundaries and all of that stuff at work, I want to give you some things that you can think about. I want to give you some things that you can do in order to, to, to feel more like, okay, I got a handle over this. I know how I can operate. I know how I can establish and hold these boundaries a little bit more powerfully. And I know what I need in order to, you know, to thrive. I'm playing for everybody thriving, not just surviving. Surviving is what a lot of you are doing. You're just surviving. I'm just getting by day to day. Let me get to tomorrow. Let me get to tomorrow. Okay, got it. And once that survival, like once you've established that, how can we get to thriving? Because you can. So here are some things that uh, you can be doing to help create more balance within work and, and establish those boundaries. The first is that idea of coming back into center, that balance being coming into center. And it's just aligning with that idea. Because again, as long as balance is something that happens external, your ability to manage and maintain and be effective with all the things happening external to you, then your sense of balance is at the whim of you know how fast those things outside of you are moving or how many things you're juggling at once. Like for example, if balance is about your ability to time manage, then right now it's, it's August. A lot, of, a lot of kids went back to school. So things started picking up, right? A few weeks before back to school, you got to get, you know, meet with all the teachers and maybe you got to file and fill out some paperwork and you got to go to some meetings and you got to get all the supplies together and you got to get all these different things. And so if balance to you is about being able to maintain, well, all summer long, you had three months of just getting into that nice routine and then boom, all of a sudden August hits and now everything is just thrown off like crazy because now you've got all this stuff going on and well, there's no more balance. That happens if you feel like balance is external. So one of the first things to do is recognize that balance is all about your internal state and that it can be controlled and, and influenced by you. You have control over that. You don't have control over when school starts, 
right? You don't have control over whatever you need to be uh, uh, gathering for your kids so that they can go off to school and have all their supplies. You don't have control over that stuff, but you do have control over you. So that's the first place to start. Next is a lot of times when we're, we're struggling with establishing balance at work and standing for ourselves and having those powerful conversations, those needed conversations with bosses and teammates and all that, part of that has to do with trust, right? We just don't trust that we're going to be able to say what we need to say or handle ourselves during that conversation, or get over the nerves. And so building your trust within yourself is huge. Building your trust within yourself so that you know you can handle the uncomfortable conversation. You know you can sit in that conversation even if your boss pushes back. Because if you don't trust that you're going to be able to do that, there's no way you're going to want to step into that then you're in your mind, you're like, no, I already know that he's going to say this, and then I'm going to say that, and then he's going to do this, and I'm going to cry, and then he's going to say this, and I'm going to get mad, and I'm just going to not do it anyway. So why should I even have the conversation? So building trust within yourself is very, very important if you want to be able to establish boundaries and hold them. So how do you do that? How do you build trust within yourself? Well, the way you do that is by you keep your agreements to yourself. Small agreements. I'm going to wake up at 6.30. Wake up at 6.30. Don't hit the alarm until 6.45. That's breaking an agreement. I'm not going to, you know, um, watch TV before I get dressed and then you watch TV. That's breaking an agreement. So if you want to build that trust within yourself, then start small by making and keeping very small agreements. And particularly if you're feeling like you don't have any balance and there's just this total bleed between work and everything else in your life, then some small agreements you can make to yourself are to establish tiny, tiny, tiny little boundaries. What do I mean by that? You could say to yourself, okay, I'm not going to look at my phone for the first 10 minutes after I wake up. That's an agreement I'm going to keep to myself. For at least the first 10 minutes, I'm not going to look at my phone because what I always do is as soon as I wake up, I pull up my phone and I check to see you know, oh, look, I got a missed call from my teammate or, oh, look at all these messages in Slack from my team or, oh, look at these emails I need to take care of. And then the anxiety and the stress and all that kicks in. So a small agreement you can make for yourself is I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes, just the first 10 minutes of my day. And keeping that agreement is a deposit into your trust account. Now, oh, okay, I kept my agreement. Yes, I did it. All right, if I did it today, I can do it tomorrow. And that helps to build trust over time. An agreement like that also has the added benefit of helping to establish a little bit of a boundary. It's like a little tiny boundary. One that not everybody has to know that you're keeping, but you know you're keeping it. So after that, after you, you have you know, looked at how you define balance and, and grasped the idea that balance is being centered within yourself, and then you've started to make and keep very small agreements to yourself so you can build your trust account. After that, start focusing on what you can control. You know, and there's going to be things at your work that you can control and things you cannot control. Right? And at first, just I want you to focus on just the things that are within your area of control. And for you, that is what you can do, like what you do with your life. Right? You can control your actions and the things that you do moment to moment. So focus there. Your boss doesn't have a say, doesn't know what happens from when you wake up to when you arrive at the office or when you log on to, you know, your shared online workspace. Like there is time in between those moments that are yours. Focus on those those moments. Focus on that time. And from when you leave the office or when you leave the shared workspace and you go home and you go to sleep, there is time there that's your time. You got to use that time. So at first, focus on what you can control. And what you can control is what happens during those times. When you're at the office and you're on the clock, that's work time. That's your boss's time. That might not be time you can control. Maybe down the road, we can think about how you can influence what happens during that time. But right now, let's just focus on what's going on when you first get up in those moments as you're getting ready, all of that stuff. 
Because in those moments, you have opportunities to start making deposits into you. You have opportunity to start filling up your tank. Because you know the next 12 hours are going to be give, 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 work, 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 produce, 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 produce. So what are you doing in those early moments when you first wake up, when you have that time, what are you doing for yourself in those moments? How are you seizing those moments? That's critical. You've got to be doing healthy, empowering things for yourself in those moments. And then when you head home, maybe it's after a 12 or 14 hour day. Okay. So what do you need then in order to put something back in your tank? Because you've been given for 14 hours now. You've been burning it for 14 hours. You got to put something back in your tank. You can't drive a vehicle when the, the, the gas is on E and there's just fumes and then the tank is empty. The vehicle is not going to go anywhere. And you're the same, same way. You can stretch it. You can push it. But at some point, you got to put something back. That's the area that you can, can, can control. At the end of the day, what are you doing? Are you replenishing yourself? Are you effectively replenishing yourself? Because a lot of times we're just like, screw it. I'm going to sit on this couch. I'm going to drink my drink. I'm going to eat this garbage. And I'm just going to do what I want. And that's when you let your emotions take over versus saying, okay, you know what? I know that this is a long day. This is what's going to really help me to get back into my center after this long day. That's how you focus on what you can control. And you start small when you do that. So once you've built that up for a little while, and you started to regain what little time you might have, morning and evening, and you started to make that time, you know, maximize its effectiveness and making deposits into you, and, and the whole time you've been keeping little agreements to yourself, so your trust has been going up, so now you might have some space within yourself, like you might feel ready to start looking at some bigger boundaries. And for that, I'd say determine which boundaries you're willing to, to look at. What boundaries are you willing to discuss with your boss or your coworkers? Maybe there's a convo to be had about the workload or about the amount of hours you work or about where you work or something. Where can you begin a conversation, begin a negotiation on your behalf? It's on your behalf, right? This is about you. It's not about them. It's not about, hey, you give me too much work. You got to stop giving me so much work. No, 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 no. It's, hey, I'm looking to create a little bit more balance in my life. I'm looking to, to you know, maintain my energy. I want to be able to sustain so that I can produce this company long term. I'm not trying to just burn myself out. So where can we work on this? Where is their wiggle room, right? That's how you take it from being it about them and making it about you. There's probably some type, sort of conversation like that that can happen. And so you got to determine where that is. And again, this is... This is steps into the process, right? And once you've determined where that is, then you have those conversations. And at that point, you can start to establish some new boundaries. And, but once you establish boundaries, guess what? You got to hold them. You've got to maintain those boundaries. You know, because sometimes what happens is we'll, we'll say some sort of boundary and we'll tell our team, I'm not going to be available at their 630 anymore. I, I just am not going to be available. And so you tell that to people at your work. And then at 635 and someone hits you up and you're like, I told them I wasn't going to be available. But in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, but this is a, this is a big client project we're working on. Like, you got to take this. And you take the call. Guess what? You just smashed that whole boundary. You lost credibility at that point. So when you create any a type of boundary, you got to hold it. You got to keep that boundary. Because part of what it is, is like you're training your, your, your team, you're training your, your employees, you're training your, your boss. And if they know that you're not going to hold a boundary, then, hey, they're going to look to push it. So if you establish a boundary, then you have to, have to hold it. And just think about it, it goes back to those agreements, right? When you make an agreement, you keep it. Yes, because it's important to, to, to keep those agreements. But because anytime you don't keep an agreement, it's just a major withdrawal from yourself, from your own trust account. And every time you're making those withdrawals, it becomes so much more hard, like so much more challenging for you to then stand for yourself, take yourself seriously, let alone other people take you seriously, for you to really believe that you're worth it. If you're constantly not keeping your word to yourself, 
over time, you start to believe you aren't worthy of keeping your word too. Let that sink in. That's what happens. You just start to believe you're not worthy of it. And that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. A lot of the boundaries conversation around work and other areas too. It's about I'm not worthy of it. Because for so long, you haven't been keeping those, the, your word to yourself in small ways and in big ways. So there's definitely a lot to unpack within this conversation around work boundaries and how do you find that balance. But what's beautiful about this is that is, you know, over the last 20 plus minutes or so, we've talked about how you can start really small, and take small, small steps towards getting to that place that you want to be. Because I know you want to be at that ideal work experience. And it can happen. I totally believe that those things can happen very, very quickly. But sometimes it's not about the environment of your work. It's not about how flexible your boss is or how open understanding they are. A lot of times it's about you and where you're at. Because maybe it takes a long time for you to get to the space where you feel comfortable to stand up for yourself. And that's, that happens a lot of time too. Like that's the truth right there too because, you know, we talk about self-love and I love myself. It's a great thing to say. But if you are very far away from loving yourself, then doing some big sort of act of self-love like, you know, boldly proclaiming and holding a boundary, you might be very far away from that. So maybe you just need to get to like, just self-like. And so maybe self-like Looks like saying, all right, I'm not going to do my phone for 10 minutes after I wake up. Maybe that's where you start. And there's always a starting point. For whatever pace you're trying to move at, there's a starting point for sprinters and there's a starting point for walkers. There's always a starting point. Figure out where yours is and get started because I guarantee you will not feel more balance by doing nothing. I guarantee that. I guarantee you will not feel less burnt out by doing nothing by waiting. I guarantee it because I've done it and I've seen it happen so many times with clients and I guarantee that that date that you have in your mind when things are going to be better, they won't. They won't because the reason you're experiencing life the way you are right now, it's because of your character and your character is a compilation of your habits. So if you want to change your life experience, if you want to change what you're attracting and what's happening in your life, you got to go back to your habits and you got to work on those habits now so that in six months you have a different reality. That's how it works. So I know that you can establish and hold and create these beautiful, healthy boundaries at work. I know that you can feel balance and that even if you work a very highly demanding job, that it can still be joyful and it can still fill you up. And you don't have to associate it with overwhelm and burnout. You just simply do not. And I will continue to hold that belief and hold that space for you. And so the space is there. And since the space is created, it's possible. It absolutely is possible. So I'm excited. Please reach out. Let me know how your journey towards establishing more work boundaries is going. Let me know how your journey towards feeling like you really can love your work and love the experience of it is going because I believe that you can absolutely love the experience of it and I would just love to hear from you about that. That'd be awesome. So hit me up, mattcbibbins at gmail.com. You can also go to Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens. And I talked a lot about loving yourself and making deposits into yourself in this episode. And my ebook is all about that, The Balance System. It is a way for you to be making those deposits into yourself. And it's a way for you to be getting back to balance by getting into your center. So go grab a copy right now. It's a simple, simple guide for creating sustained balance. And right now you can pay what you want for it. And I guarantee you're going to be able to have more peace and flow in your life and to experience more balance. And that's what I'm playing for in my life, and that's the space I'm holding for you. So go grab your copy. It's at matthewbivens.com slash balance. And with that, I say thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the podcast. It was a lot of fun. 
We got one more episode about balance coming up, and uh, it's going to be a really great one. I'm going to talk about how I maintain balance in my life. I'm going to dig through all the little things that I do, the mindsets, the habits, the tools, the community, all of it that I use to create and feel balance day to day, moment to moment, and get back into balance when I fall off. Because yes, I fall off and I fall off frequently. And so I'm going to share with you how my balance ecosystem exists. And it's going to be a great conversation. So I'm excited for that one. I'll see you then. My name is Matthew Bivens. Here's to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.